getting to New Orleans. Either he traveled down the Mississippi and risked his life and fortune with the river pirates, or he followed the dangerous overland trail known as the Natchez Trace, infested with bandits and highwaymen. Either way, the journey was beset with peril. But to Jim Bowie, whose business ventures took him far and wide, these perils were the natural risks to be encountered in a raw country where only the strong survive. To Jim Bowie, these perils spelled adventure. Anybody here? You there in the wagon? How about a little talking first and shooting after? Huh? I don't mean you any harm. What are you scared of? everybody. There was only me and Pop. They killed him. They? Yeah. I thought you was one of them coming back after me. You mean I looked like one of the men who killed your father? I don't know. I never saw him. It was still dark when they came last night, and I was asleep in the wagon. I heard their voices and heard them ask Pop if they could sleep by the fire. He said yes, and pretty soon it was quiet, so I went to sleep again. Some shots woke me up, and... All I could see was some men riding away on horses. They'd taken Pop's money and shot him. I see. Who uh, buried your father? I did. What's your name, son? Peter Jelkins. I'm Jim Boy. Where are you from? Kettlesboro, Kentucky. I was born in Kentucky, too. Where are you heading? Natchez. We was gonna meet... My mother. She was kind of sick, so Pa sent her by boat. Oh. Well, um, just so happens I'm heading that way. You want to come with me? I'm not afraid. I can take care of myself and them robbers, too, if they come back. Well, I wasn't thinking of you. I was thinking of myself. It's kind of scary traveling alone. It's nice to have company. Especially company that can shoot as good as you. How about it, Peter? You want to come with me? Well, let's uh, take a look around, shall we? A lot of hoof marks here in the soft earth. Looks like uh, two horses and a donkey or a burro. See those little hoof marks there? wanted more money. Why didn't you offer it to him? I did. He wouldn't budge a foot further. Well, Hawk or no Hawk, we can't sit here in the middle of the wilderness forever. 
Either we go on without a guide or we turn back. It's times like this when a woman needs a man like your father. He'd never been scared out by any hawk. Uh, pardon me, folks. I couldn't help overhearing. What is this about the hawk being on the trace again? It is true. Twice the hawk struck during the past week. He robbed and murdered both victims. Oh, allow me to introduce myself. I am Deacon Haskell of Piney Ridge. I have uh, traveled the trace many times, spreading the gospel, and I have yet to come to any harm. Perhaps you are unduly alarmed. Don't fool yourself, Deacon. It was the hawk, all right. He always treats his victims the same way, robs them and then kills them. Now, you folks want my advice, you won't venture out on that trace without a good guide. Peter, about a man moving out west to find some breathing room? Hereabouts, man can't hardly find any hitching space. Come on, let's you and me go in the store and get ourselves some groceries and be on our way. Well, howdy, Jim. Hey, I see you're carrying that new knife Mr. Black made for you. Oh, boy, that sure is a beauty. Yes, sir. Don't mind telling you, it feels good hanging there, too. Ah, I thought you was heading for home. I was. Changed my mind. I got myself a new partner. He's got an appetite bigger than mine. We need some groceries. Slab of bacon, five pound of beans, please. Right. Say, wasn't you in here just yesterday with a kind of an oldish man? That was my father. His father was murdered and robbed on the trace a few miles south of here. I'm taking him to Natchez to his mother. You hear that, folks? His father was robbed and murdered on the trace just south of here. Oh, poor boy. Was it the man called the hawk? He doesn't know. He was asleep. He only woke up when they were riding away. He didn't see him clearly. Just heard their voices. Yeah. Uh, Peter, will you take us out the wagon? All right. Well, don't just stand there, Samuel, with your mouth open. Tell us what we do now. Well, what can we do without a guide? Well, the trace is clearly marked. Just follow the wagon track. Well, the truth is, Jim, these folks ain't used to traveling by trail. They're from the city. Oh, our guide was scared out by all this talk of the hawk operating again. He left us flat. Miss Pope and I have to get to Natchez. We're getting married. Mr. Cummins is her fiance, and the lady there is her mother, Mrs. Pope. Howdy, ma'am. And uh, I didn't catch your name, mister. August Meyer. I come from Germany. And the gent with the stovepipe hat is Deacon Haskell from Piney Ridge. Howdy do, sir. Folks, meet Jim Boy. I don't mind telling you all the trace is no place for a bunch of greenhorns. I'm begging your pardon, ma'am. Oh, don't apologize, Mr. Bowie. We're greenhorns, all right. There's no mistake in that. All the same, if I were a man, I'd show that hawk a thing or two. Yeah, I bet you would at that. Uh, Mr. Bowie, as long as you're going along to Natchez, why don't we tag along with you? We'll pay your guide's fees. Well, now, Miss Pope, I... Please, Mr. Bowie, I have funds with me. It will be a disaster if I lose them. And I have my dowry. You wouldn't want me to be a pauper when I got married, would you, Mr. Bowie? With beauty such as yours, miss, a lady would never be poor. You hear that, Samuel? Why can't you ever say nice things like that? You'd be doing them a real favor, Jim. If the hawk is loose on the trace, these folks wouldn't have a chance. Now, seeing as how you're going that way anyhow with a little problem, you might as well take along a big one. <laughs> well, all right. But on one condition, I'm boss. Oh, that's fine with me. <laughs> now, Lucy, don't you give Mr. Bowie any trouble. If she does, you have my permission to give her a good switching. Thank you, ma'am. That'll be a pleasure. Fine with me, Mr. Bowie. Me, too. May I go along, too, sir? Of course, Deacon. Well, now that that's settled, when do we start? Right now. Load up, everybody. I'll be ready in about half an hour. Oh, we're leaving now, miss. But I would like to take a bath and change. We're leaving now, with or without you, Miss Pope. Excuse me, ma'am. I have a feeling it can give a good hard switching, Lucy. Tell you, Sam. His name is Samuel, Mother. Well, I like Sam. Sounds more like a man. Well, I like Sam, too. Well, I like Samuel, and you're going to be called Samuel. 
Do you know what my husband would have done to me if I'd screamed at him like that? He'd have kicked me right in the bustle. I'd like to see somebody try that with me. <laughs> so would I. What? Mother, can't you hurry? I'm so hungry. Oh, you can't cook anything on this till it burns down. It's far enough here to roast the side of a cow. <laughs> that fire's to keep warm by, Miss Pope. In a few minutes, you'll have a small fire to cook over. Who's missing? Where's coming? Send him after some bath water for me. I said no one was to leave camp without my knowledge. You want to get your young man killed, Miss Pope? Mr. Bowie, you have such a loud, threatening voice. I'm sure no robber would have the courage to come near us. <gasps> you... There's work to be done, Miss Pope. Get on your feet and help your mother cook supper. Mr. Bowie, you remind me so much of my dear departed husband. Thank you, ma'am. You grind. Go on, grind. How many fires you see, Jacques? Two. Looks like the Ark has discovered the Pompe Jean. Thank you, ma'am. Well, I guess it's about time to turn in. No. Right now. Come on, Peter, you sleep in the wagon. Time to stop, time to eat, time to sleep. If there's anything I can't stand, it's a bossy man. Well, he's done right well being bossy. Owns nearly the biggest plantation in Louisiana. Really? Better give me your jewelry, Lucy. Where are you going to sleep, Mr. Bowie? Well, I'll just curl up in the blanket over by the fire. You're not scared, are you? No. You just keep this long gun of yours handy, son, and you'll be all right. Good night, Peter. Good night, Jim. Hmm. Time you were going to bed, too, Lucy, dear. I go to bed when I feel like it. Uh, Cummins, women are like horses. Have to break them in early and let them know who's boss. I'll get a log for the fire. Horses. I'd like to see somebody try and break me. Oh, go to bed and stop talking like a fool. See her to her tent, Sam. Yes, Mother Pope. Will you go first, Samuel? Oh, of course, dear. For a preaching man, you don't have much to say, Deacon. <clears throat> well, preaching's for them that need saving, ma'am. I keep the good word for them that needs them. The book says not to cast your pearls where they won't do no good. I uh, mean, no offense, ma'am. But you don't look like a woman that needs no preaching. Mr. Bowie! What's the matter, Sonny? You want something? You ever seen me before, Sonny? No, sir. I wouldn't say anything to Mr. Bowie if I was you. I wouldn't like that. And I'll be watching you. First, you ought to keep it burning. Rest of the night. Mr. Bowie, I'd feel better if you kept this box for me tonight. Oh, if it'd make your rest easier, Miss Pope. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mother Pope. Good night, Ben.
I don't know, Mother Pope. Hold it, Cummins. We don't know how many of them there may be out there. We might get trapped. I'm sorry, Bowie. I guess I kind of messed things up for you. Forget it, Deacon. We all bungled this one. <coughs> what is it, Miss Wolf? His money belt's empty. And his shoes are missing. That's funny. He had him on when he laid down to sleep. Well, they didn't get the strong box. Although they intended to, that's for sure. They attacked me first. They must have known I was guarding it. But how? Yeah, I wish I knew. Mr. Bowie. Yes, Peter, what is it? Nothing, Mr. Bowie. Well, I'll stay and watch the rest of the night. You folks try and get some rest. I don't believe any of us feel very much like sleep, Mr. Bowie. If you'll kick up the fire, why, I'll make us all a cup of coffee. Lucy, fetch some water. Oh, Mother. You heard your mother. Fetch some water. Samuel, get some water for Mother. Yes, dear. Oh, Cummins, Cummins. <laughs> I want to tell you something quick. What is it, Peter? Shh, not so loud. The deacon will hear. What about the deacon? Last night, the minute I got in the wagon and covered my head with the blanket, I heard the deacon's voice and I remembered. It's the same voice I heard when my pa was killed. You sure? I'm sure, all right. He knows I know, too. I think he wants to kill me, Mr. Bowie. Peter, you mustn't start imagining things. I'm not imagining things. That's the man that killed my pa. I'll bet he killed August, too. You could be right. But we'd have to catch him in the act. They didn't get the strong box, so they'll probably try again tonight. If they do, we'll have a little trap ready for them. Go on, climb in. Everybody ready? Ready, Mr. Boy. All right, let's go. Plate for Samuel, collect the plates for Mother. You certainly don't believe in spoiling your future husband before marriage, do you, Miss Pope? If you think a woman should spend her life waiting on a man hand and foot, I pity your poor wife. Oh, I pity her too, Miss. In fact, I pity her wife so much, I never took one yet. <laughs> Come on, young fella, it's time for you to go to bed. Oh, and son, you take the strong box. Nobody would think of a kid guarding it. Thanks, Mr. Boy. I'll guard it real good. All right. Good night, lad. Lucy, bedtime for you and me, too. I want you to rub my back with some of that liniment. Good night, Sam. Good night, Lucy, dear. Good night, Sam. Cummins, you take the first watch before you get too sleepy. Oh, that's very kind of you, Mr. Boy. Uh, say, Bowie, uh, maybe I better look at the horses. That's a good idea, Deacon. That's a good idea. And see that tide close, huh? I'll so they can't move around too much? I'll see to it. Where's the big fellow with the knife, Sleepy? I'll take care of him. You go for the kid in the wagon. He's got a strong box. And make a good job of him. That boy knows that I killed his old man. You handle the young fellow standing watch. He's 
Angel over there for the story. Oui. All right, we know what to do. You get back there. Let's see what you do. Everything's fine. I hope so. Drop that knife. Go on, move. Quick, the Egan's running away! No, deep and iron. No. 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 Well, now. take us to get to Natchez. You'll be seeing your mother tomorrow night, son. Uh, you fellas comfortable? Everybody ready? Get in the back seat, Lucy. Well, I think I'd like to ride in the front seat for a change, Samuel. The name's Sam, and I said get in the back seat. <gasps> Whatever you say, dear. Sam? Ready, Mr. Bowie? <laughs> yes, Sam, I reckon you are. Come on, up. Adventure and man. 